Hi everyone, welcome to the course. This is CRJ 300 uh, Corrections. Uh, it's just to start off, uh, we're gonna be covering a lot this semester uh, from uh, the origins of prisons, uh, penitentiaries, and uh, to the contemporary correctional facilities. Uh, we'll be talking about the trends uh, of uh, each of the eras of corrections or prisons. Uh, starting off with, we can look at the treatment facility, well, the penitentiaries, uh, where inmates would uh, seek penance for their crimes, all the way up to uh, the community-based models that we're currently seeing. Uh, we'll also talk about the impact of the subcultures of uh, correctional uh, facilities that uh, officers are, uh, are part of that uh, or have their own subculture and then the inmates that have the uh, the opposite side of that subculture uh, and how they interact and uh, work together and work against each other. Uh, we'll discuss uh, issues such as death penalty, overcrowding, uh, recidivism rates, which is really important. And, and more importantly, we'll be discussing the uh, rehabilitation of offenders. Uh, all in all, we're going to be covering a lot of information, and I always like to tell students it's it's critically important that we tend not to look at inmates as cogs on a shelf or a product um, that you might find in some other type of warehouse or, 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 or manufacturing facility. These are individuals that just happen to uh, be at the wrong place in the wrong time, and it's important to understand that they're individuals, they're, they have minds. And uh, in the 15 years that I worked inside of a correctional facility, I can honestly tell you that about 2% of the offenders were truly evil. That leaves 98% of people that just happen to be, uh, have gotten caught in, uh, and just found themselves in a bad point in their lives. I, I, I like to remind people that uh, we're not all perfect and that uh, we've all committed our own sins or committed crimes as we were uh, growing up. Uh, I'm sure that some of you drank alcohol before you were 21, uh, may have smoked marijuana uh, before it was legalized here in the state of Massachusetts, or you may just uh, drive up and down the roads really fast and speed. It doesn't make you any better than those that are inside. It just means that you got caught. And they, you didn't get caught and they did get caught. So it's important to realize that these, they're not typically, most offenders are typically not uh, hardened criminals. They're not, uh, not all of them are rapists, murderers, child molesters. They're, they're people that just got caught up in, in, in a bad point in their lives or um, they're struggling with some type of mental uh, illness or uh, you know, some type of uh, conflict that's going on in their lives, whether it be a, a demon of, of addiction or um, the inability uh, to uh, control oneself and not be so violent. Uh, we tend to look at most offenders between the ages of 18 and 25, um, males, and uh, it, there's a lot of data that's behind this, and it, and, it, and it looks at why an individual may commit a crime and why, and why they're getting incarcerated. Always keep in mind that, um, that it's, not, it's not always the individual. There are sociological, psychological, and economic factors that lead to incarceration. Uh, there is also the play of political, uh, there's a political aspect. I highly recommend watching the Net Netflix docuseries, uh, well, docudrama, uh, the th documentary, uh, the 13th. Uh, it gives you an idea of um, how laws were created uh, that impacted uh, certain communities within the United States that have contributed to why we have the highest rate of incarcerated individuals in the world. Uh, it's, it's, it's fairly interesting to, to dig down in this. So overall, my point is, is that incarceration and corrections in general and its role in the criminal justice system is, is critically important, um, not just to look at it and say, okay, this is the third branch of the criminal justice system, but understand the sociological, the, the economic, the political factors that lead to incarceration. Um, that not everybody has the same opportunities or lived in a perfect home. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really good to, uh, to take a look at those factors as we discuss this uh, over the next six weeks. Uh, I, I'd like to point out that uh, you can reach me um, by text, by phone, by email. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I want you to do well on this course, um, and I really want to see that, uh, that you're walking away with 
not sympathy, but some empathy and understanding of why uh, individuals might be incarcerated and the factors that lead uh, them there. And also what changes are being made in the criminal justice system, specifically in corrections, to reduce recidivism and, and really highlight uh, what corrections has, a, what role corrections has in the criminal justice system and are there better alternatives than incarceration, diversion programs, rehabilitation facilities, halfway houses. Um, th there's a variety of different things. So if you, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and I can't wait to uh, work with you over the next six weeks.